What's going on guys? This is Andrew Chicken and welcome back to another video. In this one I'm going to be showing you guys how to play one of the most versatile champions in the realm, Grok. Grok is one of the better champions in the realm right now, quite contrary to what I said in my top 5 worst champions video, being able to heal quite substantially, deal loads of damage, and even tank. Grok can be used to fill almost any role, and I'll be going over how you can play each one in this video. Also, I'd like to thank you all for helping me reach 100 subscribers. While it doesn't seem like much, it does mean a lot to me that 100 different people are subscribed to my YouTube channel, out of all the channels out there. So without further ado, let's get into how to play the silly shaman of paladins, Grok. Grok's first and most important role is the role of a healer. Grok's totem provides one of the most potent heals in the realm, by default healing anyone who stands in it for 420 health a second, although with the right loadout, this can be almost doubled. So how do you make such an impressive loadout that can carry games with insane healing? There are a few cards that are crucial to such a deck. Crackle or Monolith Totem will both increase how long your totem is up for. Crackle will make the totem last for a longer time before it despawns, while Monolith Totem increases its health. Either one will help with making a good healing deck, although I prefer Crackle for keeping my totem up for a longer period of time because it consistently provides much more healing. I would definitely put Outreach and Healing Rain in a healing loadout as well, so your totem can span a larger area and give out more healing. There are two other cards that I use in my healing deck that I find extremely useful for dishing out heals extremely efficiently. Oftentimes the tank or whoever you're trying to heal as Grok is much more mobile than you or simply running away, so it helps to have some way to get to them quickly. Astral Traveler is a card that grants you a significant speed boost whenever you activate Ghost Walk, so you can use that as a proper movement ability to get to an ally faster. A great pair with this card is Gale, which reduces the cooldown of your totem whenever you enter Ghost Walk. This is great if you need to get an ally healing immediately but your totem has a few extra seconds of cooldown. Together, these cards are, in my opinion, absolutely necessary for a great healing loadout for Grok. Finally, Totemic Ward is the best option for his legendary card because it greatly boosts his healing output and can ruin any Bomb King's Day with its CC immunity. There is some strategy involved in placing totems as a healing Grok. Like King's Illusions or Barracks turrets, Grok's totem can be destroyed easily by any enemy with Bulldozer or a heavy hitting weapon like Kinesis Sniper Rifle so it helps to put his totem around a corner where the totem itself can't be hit, but your teammates can easily get access to his healing. His totem can still heal through walls if the boundary is past one, so use the wall to your advantage. Hide it just out of reach so the enemies will have a more difficult time accessing it. Of course, if your Makoa on point is about to die and your healing will save him, place down the totem where he is even if there's a chance that it could get shot at. You can always use your body to block incoming shots aimed at the totem. Most of the time, you can just heal the damage right back. It also helps to avoid putting down a totem when you know there's a high risk for it to be destroyed almost instantly. If you know that Drogo's always salvos the point when the round starts, wait until that's passed before you place down the totem. If you're up against a King Bomb or a Skies Bomb, wait until after that detonates before you heal your enemies. If you place it down before they detonate, your totem will just be destroyed, and your teammates will yell at you for not healing. Grok is also an extremely strong damage pick with his Malastrom legendary card that lowers the cooldown of his shock pulse whenever you deal damage with your lightning staff and allows it to bounce between enemies four more times. With this legendary and some decent aim, you can send out a shock pulse that has the potential to deal 600 damage to each enemy it hits in total, and you can spam these shock pulses out by harassing the enemies with your staff. There are also some good cards that you can put in the damage Grok loadout that can further boost the damage he can do. Arc Lightning will increase how far your shock pulses can bounce, allowing you to hit targets that would be just out of range otherwise. Astral Traveler is also helpful here because it allows you to chase enemies or run away even faster. Thunderlord and Electrostatic are extremely helpful for allowing you to shoot for a longer period of time and regenerate your overheat quicker, which means more damage is put out. As far as actually playing damage grok goes, consider your totem to be personal healing that you should only share if it's crucial to a teammate's survival. Damage Grok becomes 10 times scarier when he's healing back all the damage that you throw at him and his other teammates standing next to him, while he's ticking down your health 600 at a time with shock pulses. Otherwise, good aim is all that is really necessary to play Damage Grok. The only other thing you need to do is cooperate with your team. If you're the only healer, you should never decide to play Damage Grok. If you want to play Damage Grok, let your team know during champion selection, and they might choose a second healer to main healing. If there is a second healer just by chance, you should ask them if they're going healing or damage, or simply say that you're going damage. Nothing is worse than having two healers who go damage without the other knowing, so the team hardly receives any healing. Damage Grok should always be secondary to healing, and played only if there is another healer. 
Of course, when you pick Grok to heal, and the dummies on your team don't choose a tank, you can definitely tank as Grok. I will forever say that Grok is one of the best tanks in the realm, because he can be so stinking hard to kill. With the right cards and the right mentality, Grok can definitely rival other tanks alone on the point. Once again, I would recommend getting Astral Traveler for enhanced movement ability. Two cards that are definitely needed for tanking as Grok are Shamanic Might and Totemic Rescue, which both give you nearly 3,000 health and grant you a shield when your health runs low. This is definitely helpful for tanking along true frontlines that can have nearly 5,000 health. Buffing his totem's health and healing is also helpful, so you can heal back any damage that the tanks throw at you, because what Grok lacks in health, he makes up for in healing power. His best legendary card is, once more, Totemic Ward, because it will give you great healing on the objective and also grant you CC immunity when you sit in the totem, which is extremely helpful, because most frontline champions have some form of crowd control, from Makoa's hook to Ash's numerous effects that send you flying. When playing Grok as a tank, you should definitely stick to the objective. While other tanks have huge health pulls that allow them to be more flanky, if you leave your totem's area, you're at a significant disadvantage on the front lines. He should definitely be played as a more defensive tank, like Barrack or Anar, dominating the point and keeping others from entering, not trying to push them off. Also, try and stay near your teammates so they can not only receive some of your healing, but they can also support you on point, because a tank Grok needs just as much, if not more, support on the objective than any other tank. Tanking as Grok can be difficult, but it can definitely be pulled off. There is one item that you can buy in the round that is crucial to any Grok success on the battlefield, regardless of whether they're tanking, healing, or dishing out damage. Kronos is helpful for spamming totems or shock pulses all over the place, depending on what place they are going for, and it can also lower the cooldown of your movement ability so you can chase after more things. If you go for a green item, which is the least necessary of all of them because most of the time you'll be sitting in your totem. You should definitely pick Kill to Heal over Life Rip because his staff doesn't do as much damage as other champions that would benefit more from it, like Victor or Drogos. All the other items are pretty much conditional. If the team has a lot of healing, pick Cauterize. If there's an enemy and a Grok on the enemy team, and usually no one on your team has Bulldozer, pick up some Bulldozer. The most important item you can buy is Grok as Kronos, which is crucial to being a powerful Grok. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If this video helped you play Grok as either a tank, support, or damage champion, be sure to leave a like on this video and comment down below who you'd like to see me do a champion tutorial on next. Also, be sure to subscribe so you can stay tuned to all of the Paladin's content I'll release in the future. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. I'm a snowman!